All right, Luigi Mangioni has been arrested as the suspected killer of CEO Brian Thompson. Um, good looking kid. They're painting this guy, though, all over the media. I, I know. And now that I've said good looking kid, I'm going to get a barrage of me. Oh, Kim, what, why are you saying that about a killer? Actually, you probably won't say that because it seems like most people are on the side of Luigi Mangione. Um, people are celebrating the shooter more than they are mourning the death of the big pharma or the big health insurance CEO. So it just kind of goes to show once again where our, where our society is at. But anyway, they're painting this guy all over the media as a left-wing anti-capitalist, okay? This is what they're saying. Uh, story after story in left-wing media like Daily Beast and The Guardian, they're saying left-wing anti-capitalists are saying this and the New York Post, they're saying this in every single major outlet that's out there. But I'm not sure why, where they're getting that. There's really no evidence of this that I've seen. First, let's go through a rundown of what we know about this guy, okay? Um, he's 26 years old. He graduated valid Victorian of his boys prep school in Baltimore, Maryland. In fact, we've got a little piece of his valid Victorian speech. Watch this. I'm honored to be speaking to you all today on behalf of the Gilman class of 2016. When I started writing the speech, I talked with several students and teachers and asked how they would describe the class of 2016. Many of the students characterized our class as inventive in both imagination and initiative. At the same time, several teachers reminded me of our class's commitment to Gilman and his traditions. Okay, so that's what the kid sounds like. Um, I guess he's not a kid anymore, right? But that's, he was a kid then, but he's now 26. He did go on to, I'm gonna use valedictorian. So he went on to Ivy League, UPenn. He received masters and uh, he got a bachelor's and a master's from UPenn in computer science. His friends reportedly, since it's come out that he's been arrested as a suspect, his friends from high school have come out saying that he had back surgery at one point that apparently completely changed him. And um, this is evident because he is an avid reader who's reviewed nearly 300 books on Goodreads, and many of them had to do with back pain and the pharmaceutical industry. But at one point, he read the Unabomber Ted Kaczynski's book, and he wrote this review. Here's the review that he wrote. Let me just read it to you. He says, clearly written by a mathematics prodigy. He gave it four stars, by the way. Um, the book by Ted Kaczynski is Industrial Society and Its Future. And he says, clearly written by a mathematics prodigy, reads like a series of lemmas on the question of 21st century quality of life. It's easy to quickly and thoughtless write this off as a manifesto of a lunatic in order to avoid facing some of the uncomfortable problems it identifies, but it's simply impossible to ignore how prescient many of his predictions about modern society turned out. He was a violent individual, rightfully imprisoned, who maimed innocent people. While these actions tend to be characterized as those of a crazy Luddite, however, they are more accurately seen as those of an extreme political revolutionary. A take I found online that I think is interesting, and now he quotes a different take online, and the quote that he quotes is, um, had the balls to recognize that peaceful protest has gotten us absolutely nowhere, and at the end of the day, he's probably right. Oil barons haven't listened to any environmentalists, but they feared him. When all other forms of communication fail, violence is necessary to survive. You may not like his methods, but to see things from his perspective, it's not terrorism, it's war and revolution. Fossil fuel companies actively suppress anything that stands in their way, and within a generation or two, it will begin costing human lives by greater and greater magnitudes until the earth is just a flaming ball orbiting third from the sun. Peaceful protest is outright ignored. Economic protest is impossible in the current system. So how long until we recognize that violence against those who lead us to such destruction is justified as self-defense? These companies don't care about you or your kids or your grandkids. They have zero qualms about burning down the planet for a buck. So why should we have any qualms about burning them down to survive? We're animals just like everything else on this planet, except we've forgotten the law of the jungle and bend over for our overlords when any other animal would recognize the threat and fight to the death for their survival. Quote, violence never solved anything is a statement uttered by cowards and predators. So people are pointing to this review and the fact that he quoted this uh, one that's actually promoting violence as being like, okay, we're getting into the mind of him a bit here. He's clearly somebody who um, ha took out some sort of an activist stance, believed that he's more of a political revolutionary, potentially. Like these, these are all pointing to possible motives, right? 
So we don't really know his motive. Um, apparently they found a manifesto. We'll get to that. But the but this is kind of giving some insight. Although now this was what people would call very left wing, right? I mean, this was about the environment, but his issue was obviously with big pharma, big healthcare, um, because that's who he ended up going after was the CEO of United Healthcare. Um, some other interesting things about this guy is his he's cousins with the sitting Maryland state delegate, Nino Mangione, who represents District 42A. Um, his cousin's about 37, 38 years old, and he's a Maryland house rep. When he was, when Luigi Mangione was arrested, he was apparently eating at a McDonald's when an employee recognized him and called the police. And what's really interesting, and this is what I'm, what I'm pointing to is that this, the world or American society, I should say, seems to be more on the side of Luigi than the CEO. That McDonald's now has been flooded with really bad reviews. And the reviews are people saying things like, the place is infested with rats, <laughs> pointing to the rat who um, ratted out Luigi. Uh, I mean, look, we're seeing this all over. There was one kid at one point early on that when the reports came out that Luigi had escaped or, or whoever, I mean, he's the suspected killer, but whoever the real killer was supposedly had escaped on a city bike that are trackable with GPS. There was this kid, this kind of nerdy kid who came out and he's like, I track city bike data every minute. I just kind of comb through and track this data and I keep it. And people are like, why would you do that? And he's like, it doesn't matter. I like data. So he's kind of this nerdy data kid. And he says, so I think I know exactly where this bike was and where this bike left and where it ended up. And he then did this video on tracking what he believed was the city bike that the suspected shooter used. And the internet went nuts against the data nerd saying, how dare you? You're such an awful person to do this. You're a rat, you're a terrible person that you would rat out this killer of the CEO of, of healthcare. I mean, that is where we're at as a society. The society just, American society hates our healthcare system. And yet nothing really ever changes with it. We don't ever actually make headway. And it has a lot to do with the big money interests of the big insurance companies, the big pharmaceutical companies, the sick care industry that we have. And that's the stuff that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. talks about changing. Um, but people love, and, and now I'm seeing all these women, you know, they're seeing the pictures of the, of, and he is a good looking guy, objectively. Maybe, you know, I, I, Ted Bundy was apparently a good looking guy too. Doesn't mean that they weren't psycho killers. But here's, you know, look at him. He's like shredded, healthy guy, looks great. Um, women are saying, wow, you know, I knew he was good looking. I knew, <laughs> oh, I had a feeling he was going to be hot or whatever. So it, it's interesting to see the psychology of Americans and how they're reacting to all of this. People love this guy. Here's a video that was, uh, it's a real quick video. This is what's trending on social media about uh, finding out Luigi's the suspected killer. Watch this. He was the best guy around. What about the people he murdered? What it's murder? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So when he was arrested, now this is where things get a little bit weird. When he was arrested, he was allegedly carrying a ghost gun and a suppressor consistent with the weapon used in the killing. He was apparently carrying a three-page manifesto detailing his motivation and mindset. He also had on a multiple fake IDs, a fraudulent New Jersey ID, which they said was used in the hostel, and a US passport, some clothing, including the mask that matched the shooter's mask. That's what they're claiming. So um, what's weird about that is if you just killed the CEO of United Healthcare, wouldn't you leave the manifesto there? Like, why would you be carrying the manifesto on you? Why would you have all of this you know, we're talking days after this. It's not like they apprehended the guy moments after the killing or an hour after the killing. No, th this took them days. This was a manhead. It took for a long, it took a long time. Why would he be carrying any of this stuff? So that's one thing people are pointing out as an inconsistency that this is bizarre. Why would he be carrying this around? Why would he be carrying around the manifesto? That is something that you would leave behind at the scene so that people know your motive because ideally you would never be caught. So um you know there's there's that what murder he was the best guy around what murder <laughs> of course you planted the evidence on him there's no way that luigi did this 
Okay, so now let's get to this whole idea that he's this far left anti-capitalist radical. Um, I want to show you. I, I was able to. I, I believe his Twitter account is still up. They've been they've been uh, erasing him from the internet all day today. So his Facebook, I think, and YouTube account. I mean, Facebook and Instagram account were taken down. There was an alleged YouTube account that had kind of an ominous video. And it's, it's. Uh, I don't wanna share it with you, the video, because I'm not sure. It, it I think it might be fake, um, but that YouTube account nonetheless has been taken down. I don't know if he still has his Twitter account, but it's been up all day. I wanna show you, so I scrolled through his followers, scrolled through some of his posts so that you could see for yourself, because when you hear left, far left, anti-capitalist, you've got this idea of the types of things he's posting and the type of people he follows and, you know, you've got an idea of this person. And of course they would say the guy's anti-capitalist because they're wanting to demonize um, any people's movement against big monopolies, big companies making fortunes off of people. You know, they wanna turn that into like a radical left ideology that only the radical woke weird left is into, um, you, you know, is, is, is an activist against the capitalists you know, they try to make it like that. But so so that's just a narrative and we always have to watch out for that. However, they paint these people whenever they, you know, whenever somebody does something bad, they're always quick to kind of ascribe a political ideology. And it's it's one that they're trying to demonize actively. The elites are trying to demonize us actively. The oligarchs running our country are trying to are trying to um demonize us because they don't want you paying attention and saying, you know what, actually I kind of agree though. You know, I mean, 33% decline rate for an insurance company when you've, you're paying them every month and you're expecting a service from them and they're not delivering it to you one third of the time. What kind of a company is that? And so, of course, the propagandists out there will say, that's just anti-capitalist thinking. That's just anti-capitalist thinking. Or it's like, actually, it's anti-capitalist what this company did. The fact that they were denying 33% of the claims when you have agreed to offer a service to the public and then you don't follow through with that, what is that? What is that? Now that's just corruption. That's not capitalism. That's not free market. That's that's something entirely different. But his uh, Twitter account doesn't showcase any of this kind of stuff. I wanna show you what it does showcase. And this is what I think is gonna be the next pivot for the media. When they figure out that this guy was following Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Rogan, and he's following like Zuby there, you could see Zuby. Um, you can see Sam Altman, he's got on here, John Spencer, who's the pro-Israel, um, West Point guy that we've had on Patrick Bet David, Robert, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. You could see there, Brett Weinstein, also in the Maha movement. Um, uh, where else, who else? Joe Rogan. He's also following Joe Rogan. He does, you know, follow some like AOC. There's some, there, it's kind of a mixed bag there, but it's a lot of the guys in the Maha, like Zuby. Brett Weinstein, Joe Rogan, I would say, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Patrick Bet David. These are all people that questioned the main narrative and um, have come out, you know, like with COVID mandates and things like that, questioning all of that stuff. And this guy was following that crowd more than he was following any major, you know, yes, AOC's on there, but I follow AOC. It doesn't, people just follow people in order to, um, you know, in order to hear, see what they're saying. But that's, so that was interesting looking at a short list of followers. He doesn't have very many. Now let's look through some of his posts, okay? So these are the posts from Luigi. He's got um, everything, you know, he's talking about, let's see here, kind of, we're gonna kind of scroll through here. Um, smartphones and health. Then there's this one, Peter Thiel on the many great startups being run by people. Uh, anxious generation. So here's like a healthcare post talking about the anxious generation. A lot of these are re reposts, but he's got a Lex Friedman one talking about having coffee in the morning. And then he's, and then his retweet was, why do people, uh, you know, like, why is caffeine okay as a drug? He's got um, a lot of these are about, oh, here's an interesting one about Christianity's decline has unleashed terrible new gods. And He's also got um, modern, ja here's an interesting one about modern Japanese urban environment is an evolutionary mismatch for the human animal. The solution to failing to falling birth rates isn't immigration, it's cultural, he says. Encourage natural human interaction, 
sex, physical fitness, and spirituality. That take right there is not a left-wing take. That, in fact, is a very, um, that's kind of like in the, I don't know what, how you would describe it. It's kind of, it's actually more of a right-wing take that's, that's been trending over the internet is the failing population. We need to have more babies. Uh, women need to be more, you know, encouraged more to have children rather than go and seek out careers. Um, we should have less immigration. We have, instead, we should be making more babies. And that's what he wrote about and sort of retweet, you know, as a response to a tweet about we need immigration as the, as the, as solving the problem. Um, he retweets Mike Benz. This one's in, this is a funny video. Look at this. He says, this is whenever I see legacy media headline, I can't unsee this skit. And it's this guy throwing dildos at a wall, hitting Venezuela, then hitting transgender, <laughs> then hitting ketamine. And here's the headline, meet Venezuela's transgender ketamine dealers. Uh, but again, like making fun of mainstream media. Here's Tim Urban. He retweeted Tim Urban. It'll soon be ubiquitous among upper class families to restrict kids under 16 from using social media. Hopefully this trend spreads to all families before too long. A hundred times easier to enforce the rule when all parents are doing it. So he's clearly thinking that social media is ruining kids' lives. That's not a left-wing take. Um, he's got this one. He does. So here's one that's kind of a left-wing take. So Elon Musk says, this is a battle to the death with the anti-civilizational woke mind virus. And he's he retweeted a guy who said, your commitment to long-term civilizational success, Elon, is not universally shared. It's not even the majority position. What you call the woke mind virus cares about one thing only, equality. The levers want to destroy everything because in the rubble, we will all be equal. So that is more of a left-wing take, I suppose. But a lot of these have been right-wing or not even, you know, it's kind of all over the place. Um, talks about ancient Rome falling, that they had 500 years and then they fell. Um, he's talking about health. These are phenomenal. Took me years to learn on my own, these health things. He, so... He talks a lot about health. Like here's one. What are your thoughts on this quote from uh, Krishnamurti's? It's no measure of good health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And he's retweeting that. Um, you know, so look, he's got uh, a lot of the stuff that he that he tweets about is health related. Um, it's not it's not like environment or woke or transgender or anything or like free Palestine, like any of the things that people would equate to left wing, which is why I didn't understand why today they were painting him as some sort of like this left wing anti-capitalist when, in fact, when you go through his Twitter account, he's following more people in the Maha crowd and he's tweeting a lot more about health. And then he goes after the CEO of United Healthcare. So it seems like he's more anti big pharma, anti big insurance, anti the medical industrial complex would be what he's more against. And my fear with this is that, like I said, they always use a person's political affiliation in order to demonize the entire movement. And so they're going to, mark my words, they're eventually going to figure this out. And they're going to start going around saying, Luigi Mangione was one of those RFK wackos following RFK and Joe Rogan. And he listened to them way too much. And he ended up being this, you know, ultra macho thinking that health and having babies is the, is the way to go in life and that we should have fewer, you know, uh, issues with healthcare industry and, and big pharma. And that was the type of nut he was. And they're going to paint him like that. And it's going to be interesting to see how many people buy into that propaganda because that's just a form of propagandizing the population, right? They're, they're propagandizing us in order to get us to hate on things that we should not be hating on, like being healthy, working out, having a family. All of these things are good things and we shouldn't be hating on it, but they're somehow painting this guy as left wing, but pretty sure, mark my words, they're going to paint the guy as uh, Maha. That's, I'm sure, I'm just sure of it, but um We'll find out more. I guess he's been arrested, right? That, or this, so this was a arrest video of him going into the, was this going into the courthouse? I think it got the, there's Luigi Mangione. What murder? Best guy. What murder? <laughs> oh, I'm going to be totally ripped off the internet for quoting that. People are going to think that I said that. Eh. 
Speaking of our broken health insurance system, because uh, we will be talking about Luigi Mangione tonight, that leaves you in massive debt and doesn't ever fix you just as sick care. And that's, of course, after extremely high monthly premiums. Let me tell you about a solution to the problem that won't leave you depressed and bankrupt and wanting to go postal. Crowd health. Crowd health isn't health insurance. It's a smarter, simpler way to handle your health care through crowdfunding. So instead of sending your money to massive corporations that profit off your fear while giving you the bare minimum, you're part of a community. For just $185 a month for an individual or $605 for a family, which is one third the price I think my husband and I are gonna be paying for our next year's premiums. Um, instead, you could do crowd health and you'll have access to telemedicine, discounted prescriptions, real support when emergencies happen. And the best part, you're not locked into restrictive networks. There's no hoops to jump through. It's just a group of like-minded people who wanna help each other out. So when you have a need, the crowd of the people who are in this will jump in, pay the bill, um, collectively, you'll never pay more than your that that 185 for a single or 605 for a family. You'll never pay more than that. Sometimes you might even pay less if people in the network are healthy and there's not a lot of claims that month. But you'll never pay more. So it's a really cool um, new way of funding healthcare. There are some companies who do it this way as well, where they don't have health insurance for their employees. They instead kind of pool all the money together and then just pay and negotiate with the hospitals and the doctors directly. And it ends up with cheaper premiums for everybody, better healthcare for everybody. It's a really cool idea. And that's what Crowd Health is doing. So join the Crowd Health revolution for just $99 a month for your first three months. You can use code Kim at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com, code Kim. Crowd Health, once again, this is not health insurance. You can learn more about it at joincrowdhealth.com. Seriously, give it a try. You deserve better than the system we've got now. Again, code Kim at joincrowdhealth.com.